Okay. Um, so one of the problems with Emacs, uh, especially for the new people who are just sort of starting to use it, is uh, there's just so many different key bindings, right? And you can never remember them all. I mean, even if you've been using it for years, you, you always have to fiddle around and remember the key bindings or look it up in the documentation or whatever. So I've written this little library, um, which has grown into a very big library, actually. Uh, to actually, it was somebody else wrote the initial code, and I've taken it over and uh, sort of completely rewritten it. Um, but basically, uh, it gives you this. You press a button, and uh, you get a menu. Uh, then you've got left and right to uh, cycle through these different menus for different things. Um, so if you're starting out, you know, it's you want to learn the basic key bindings. So this menu here, the top level menu, uh, gives you sort of all the basic commands. I mean, even if you've been using Emacs for a long time, uh, a lot of these commands you probably will have difficulty finding normally, um, or you don't, you know, you don't know them intuitively. So uh, here you've got the menu of them, and uh, you've got sub menus, and uh, the the letter in the green. Uh, you press that letter to uh, execute the command. And it's got a description of the command, and then in brackets, um, how to invoke the command normally, you know, if you're not using this menu. Um, so that saves you having to memorize stuff, right, some stuff. Uh, we've got menus for prefix keys, um, standard prefix keys, uh, like uh, meta s for the occur commands, um, and then escape or q to quit. Okay, that's pretty simple, um, but very useful for learning Emacs when you're starting out. Uh, and we've also got um, oh. right. The you'll notice that uh, some of these items are highlighted, so it will automatically um, increase the highlighting of items that you use more often, uh, so you can find them quicker. You can see them straight away. Um, we've got a menu for the major mode that you're currently in, which is automatically generated um, based on the key map and also the, the menu bar um, for that major mode. Um, so, uh, and if you want to get help on a particular command, you just press Control H and then the, the key in for the menu. So let's have a look at um, return indent. Okay, and it shows you the help page for that command. Um, so that's handy. Um, oh dear. There we go. Uh, what was I going for next? Um, right, so sometimes you have huge menus, like uh, for org mode, right? You've got just so many different commands. And uh, it can be helpful to maybe reorder them, see if you can fit more on the screen at, at uh, one time or something. So we've got um, keys for ordering. Oh, I forgot to mention, uh, one other important key is, is F1. So with each menu, we have uh, a load of special keys which do different things to that menu or to the items in the menu. So you can sort them in various different ways. You can highlight the items in different colors. You can um, restrict the items uh, by regular expression. So um, let's uh, go down a menu. Let's, let's look for um, org table commands. There we go. So that makes it sort of a bit quicker for finding what you want. Um, yeah, sorting the items so I can sort by rows or columns and uh, uh, sort by the length of the uh, description of the item or alphabetically and different things like that um, to reverse the sorting order. Uh, the, the point of that is that you can also save these menus. So uh, you might want to sort them in a particular way, highlight particular groups of items, and then save that menu. So next time you start Emacs, uh, you know, it's it's nice and easy to, to navigate your way around it. Um, what next? Uh, right, so I've got several different menus here, right? And I'm using the arrow keys to uh, go back and forth between them. So these menus are all uh, automatically generated. Well, most of them. And uh, there, there are different menu types. Um, so I've got the the major mode type, which will uh, generate the items for different major modes, you know, depends on which major mode you're in. Uh, I've got the uh, the top level, those are just um, 
Actually, these uh, the first few ones are sort of uh, hard coded in uh, the first few items. They're hard coded, but the prefix key items are automatically generated based on your prefix, your, your key bindings. Um, I've got uh, YA snippets. I've got a menu of YA snippets here, so that's kind of handy. You can see what snippets you can use in the current buffer, right? Um, uh, so these, this is again automatically generated. I mean, it just pulls the snippets from your uh, YA snippets directory. Um, you can, I can add a new menu. So there are, there are lots of different menu types, and you can create new menu types as sort of plugin files, a bit like um, Helm or anything as it used to be called. Um, but the interface here is a bit different. Um, so here's an example. I can create, uh, let's have a look at the sys directory. I can create a, a menu for navigating the directory tree, uh, which is it's good because it, you can navigate the tree very quickly, right? It's you, quick you can't see the mode line fully. Okay. Um, well, there's not there's not much more to see actually. All the, the only thing that's along the bottom is uh, just a bit of text saying press F1 for help, escape to quit, sort by color. But those are the actually the only items in this menu. Um, okay. So we've got directory uh, menus for navigating directories. Uh, we've got, um, you, you can create your own menu. You can create like a blank menu. Okay, so this is an, an empty menu, but I can, uh, I could take some items from this menu. I can copy and paste them into the other menu or just add my own items, just uh, you know, define my own items as uh, commands uh, or some Lisp code. Um, so if you've got a group of commands which you often use together, you might want to keep, you know, make your own menu for that. Um, oh, what else can I say? Uh, yeah, let's have a look at quickly the. Uh, so it's the one key. Yeah, it's on the wiki. Um, yeah. One key. Uh, it's on GitHub as well. The version that's on the wiki is working, uh, apart from the bookmarks um, plugin. I'm currently refactoring the code, uh, which is quite a big job. And uh, so, um, you know, don't start building any plugins for it yet because I'm changing things internally. But when that's done, hopefully pretty soon, then um, you know you can start building your own plugins and stuff. So um, editing menus, right? So uh, here are the keys related to the blank menu. So each different type of menu has its own keys associated with it, its own special keys. So I press F1 to get help on the things I can do with that type of menu, and I get this list. So I can, um, you see, I've got. Uh, F5 edit a menu item, F6 delete a menu item, copy, you can copy things from one menu to another, blah, 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 blah. I won't do that now because I haven't got time. Uh, this is something I'm, you know, excited about, which is, um, so this is, this type of menu is a bookmarks menu. Uh, it's empty at the moment, but let's fill it with some bookmarks. And the way we do that is uh, using another one key interface that I've written uh, called um, one key uh, read logical formula. Uh, let me just show you how it works. So these are my, I use bookmarks plus. I don't know if any of you use that. It's, it's great. So these are my tags on my bookmarks. And I can now build up a, a logical formula from these tags um, and use that as a filter for, you know, filtering my bookmarks. So let's look at everything that's tagged with Roxygen uh, or um, family. Okay. Um, now these logical formulas can be arbitrary. So as long as you can make it out of or, and, and not logical operations, right? So, oops. Okay. I've just done that. And you can, you can save your filter. Uh, 
Okay, so I've, I've created this filter, which, so these are all my bookmarks that are tagged with either, uh, was it Roxygen or Family? And I've saved that filter now as test filter, and I can use that filter in a new filter. So I could do this filter and another, or you know, I can create some logical expression from that. So I'm, I'm, you know, I'm really excited about this because you could use this for so many things. You know, for example, for EMMS for filtering out your songs, um, or for org trees for filtering out um, subtrees of your org tree, uh, or things like this. You know, if you have to build a plugin for that. Um, there's also a few other. Um, One more minute, please. Okay. Uh, all right, so there's, there's other um, things that, uh, other um, functions that you can use in your code that gives you this interface for choosing things. You can choose lists or just single items. Um, so what I have here is a, a group of menus, right? Uh, this is called a menu set, okay? And I can create other menu sets. So here I've got two menu sets. Um, I'm gonna switch to a different menu set by pressing the button for it. Okay, so this menu set, Oh, no, sorry, it's the same one. <laughs> uh, let's go, okay. Here's a different menu set, which has only got three menus. And so, so you can create these different menu sets. Um, and you can then have these menu sets uh, load up automatically depending on what buffer or what mode you're in. So if you're doing some C++ coding, you might want a different set of menus than if you're doing um, some R programming or if you're in org mode or something like that. So um, that's quite useful. Okay, another really cool thing if I've got time, is uh, one key register. So this is another type of menu, uh, which allows you to store registers in your menu, um, and keyboard macros, rectangles. Um, I've also defined a whole new load of uh, registers that you can use. Shit. Um, so, and, and so, uh, <laughs> This is a really, really handy way of um, organizing your registers and your keyboard, keyboard macros, right? Keyboard macros are just so useful. Um, I find them really useful anyway. And, um, and re registers in general, they're really useful. But you, you rarely sort of, they're not persistent, right? So this gives you a way of saving your keyboard macros and rectangles and, and all the kinds of registers in, a, in this little menu, which you can then load up another time, okay? Um, and uh, I've defined a whole load of other kinds of registers. Um, so let me just show you. Uh, actually, let's go here. Um, so we've got registers to, no, I'll do it like this. Registers, registers for starting processes. So I've got a whole load of, I can start a shell process or a Python shell, Octave, Slime, Haskell, whatever. So I can put that in a register and save it in my menu. So I just press the button and it will start up that process, and it will also start it in the directory that you specified for that process as well. Um, we've got registers for, um, what else? Uh, rectangles, registers for keyboard, uh, keyboard macros. Uh, registers for window configs, that's quite handy. Okay, so I just switch window configs by pressing uh, the, and I switched again there. Um, and you can, the, 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 it will automatically bind these registers to keys, um, so you don't have to go through the one key menu. You, you press a particular key combination to, to quickly get the register that you want. Uh, there's lots of other features as well, but I haven't got time to go into that, I think. Or can I? I think, I think there's a, actually another talk, and it's going to take one minute. Okay, and so. uh, you went over the 15 minute mark, so. All right. I'm sorry, 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 sorry. Yeah. So, so have a look at it. You know, I, I think it's really, I think it's really useful. But of course, I think that's why I wrote it. Um, uh, and if you want to write plugins for it, you know, that'd be great. One thing, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, Helm mode is really good, right? Uh, or anything as it used to be called. I think it might be possible to um, convert Helm um, plugins into one key plugins. Um, so, you know, we'd leverage the power of Helm as well, which would be quite cool. Uh, but I've got lots of ideas for plugins, uh, but I need to finish some coding first before we can start doing that properly. Okay, I'll stop. <laughs>